you've taken over from Steve Borthwick, a captain, but another thing that that means is you've also taken over from him as the chief line-out Norse at Saracens. It's something that, that I used to do for Leicester. So I thought we'd just have a little example here, have a look at maybe what you're looking at when you call a line-out. So here's a, one from the uh, Bath-Northampton uh, game at the weekend. Stuart Hooper over here, he's the line-out captain, so he'll be making the call. What's he doing? Why has he stood so far back? Yes, yeah, so it obviously looks like they, they're pre-calling here, so bringing themselves into little huddles so that the opponents can't hear. They probably have a couple of moves that they've worked on, a couple of triggers as they go into line outs and try to capitalise uh, when they send opportunities. So I think Hooper will probably walk in last and see if he can spot any, any hinges to work on. So, yeah, he's letting his troops go. He's, he's constantly assessing because Northampton are moving positions constantly, trying to con him into not being able to work out how they're going to defend this line out. As he gets there, you see there he calls the, a check call, so one for the, yeah, left the, right, one for the book. Right, the one on the book, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's obviously spotted the area that they're going to work on. So, if we go over to our two demo teams and, and have a little look, the, the guys in pink, the, the Gravely boys, they're our attacking side. Okay, so, so they've lined up away from the line out. They would have made a call. Call and, and you would have called it a 3-1-3 formation here? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, a standard formation, 3-1-3. Guys would have prepped during the week, done the analysis, chosen a few setups that they prefer. Um, and this is one that's quite common. I OK, let, let's go around the other side where the defenders are and just talk about what the attacking side are looking for. OK, so you can't mark all areas as a defence because there aren't enough bodies. So in this scenario, the defenders here from Tabard, they've got a pot of three in the middle and then a pot of three at the front. So what are you thinking as, as you walk in? You would have probably walked in in the middle, would you, here? Probably middle. I mean, as a caller, to me at the back is always okay. fantastic because you've got a view of the whole line-out. And if anyone does shift at the last second, you can always ca uh, change your call accordingly. So, I mean, there's always a weakness in a line-out. OK, so you've seen this. What are you going to call? Yeah, so first off, if you walk in, you know, and it's on at the back, I mean, the backs love that. The scrum-off is going to be a best mate if you give him one close to fly and he makes a short little pass. So, these boys uh, will draw what we call a, just a, a three, guys. So, if yep. we go three, ball goes straight to the back. Oh, hit the microphone. It's an unbelievable dart as well. Perfect. And there Perfect. we go, balls and nine hands. So you, you've literally just spotted that they've bunched up at the front, so you, you, you've, you've, uh, you've got the nice, easy ball, and, you, and it's got to be quick, hasn't it? You can't yeah. give these guys time to react. Absolutely not. I mean, you'd be, you'd be very happy to get that ball and you'd take it all day. But usually, as we saw there with Northampton, these guys aren't stationary, are they? They're, they're moving backwards and forwards, they're trying to con you, thinking, right, we're in the middle, and then they might go long late. What happens if they do that? So, I mean, so, you might, you might yeah. walk in with two calls. I mean, that first one, you did three. If we do a two, these chaps sort of notice the, you know, the middle opportunity. The caller at the back would say two, bang, and there we are. Just nice and simple. And yeah. you mentioned about those scrum halves and, and the fact that they like the ball off the back. What happens if we have, you know, the middle, if you guys move back a little bit just to take away that front ball? OK, they're giving you the front, but your scrum half might say, well, I don't really want to attack with ball from there. So what are you thinking then? So then you've got to try to generate away. Of, of getting that ball to the back. You know, we've all got tricks up our sleeves and defences shift around a lot. So if we do a four, boys, you'll see there's a bit of movement, creates a dummy in the middle. We're hoping, we're hoping this defensive pod will pull forward, which creates a, an open space at the back as well. So it's a bit of guesswork. You know, the drill's got to be good and uh, you've got to have done your homework as so well. So on that one, if we just go through that one again, just reset that really quickly. What's happened there is, is the guys come from the middle to drag that pod forward and then a hidden player right at the front has come round. So he's hoping to have come from their blind spot and by the time they see him, they haven't got time to react. Yeah, absolutely. It's often hard to clock that player coming from the front. And like I said, there's a million variations on how it can be done. But as soon as you drag pods forward, as soon as you put them in uncomfortable positions, you create weaknesses and you try to capitalise on that. And give those really annoying scrum halves oh. that are constantly in your ear. <laughs> <that they want laughs>